hope. I, pray. Yeah, I hope too. And I will tell you right now, we are live. What is up, everybody? And welcome to episode nine of the Hot Stove Podcast. I am your host, Zach Nunez. And I'm here with my co host, Mark, who's finally on a computer. Gosh. And um, the other guy who just yelled. <laughs> you can't see him. You can hear him. Um, you can hear him. Yeah. A um, couple of housekeeping things before. What are you eating there, Josh? Uh, uh, blizzard. Nice. Nice. What kind of blizzard? Mint Oreo. Ew. I don't like mint. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a deal breaker for most people. Yeah. I don't like mint at all. Um, a couple of housekeeping things before we start. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Ring the bell. Oh, yeah. Make sure to hit that like button and ring the bell as well for some more fire content coming soon. Leave a comment if you're feeling frisky. And that is what's it for our channel. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Hot Stove WMYO. Um, I post memes there occasionally. That's spicy memes. The only value that that Twitter page offers. Um, so we actually have a couple of things. This this episode is not going to be very uh, structured. Uh, I have some things that we want to go with, but it's going to be kind of in lieu of our shorter episode we did in episode seven, I think it was, where we like got some stuff to talk about, but like it's not, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we're going to start actually with I have a trivia question this time. Oh. I got trivia. Oh, first a recap of the last FanDuel contest that we did. It was week eight of the NFL season. Uh, the last two weeks have been kind of weird. Uh, we didn't How do, I do? We didn't do a show last week for, you know, election oh. purposes. Um, so our, our lineup from two weeks ago, I've got a report in on from that. So I came in first, a distant first, 137 points. Mark came in second at 101 points. Austin came in third at 90 points. And Josh came in fourth at 68 points. I, I just really think it's funny that Josh continues to not only finish in last, but like I'm getting trounced every week. In last. Yeah. Not anyway, bad. Uh, Losing money. Standings, uh, Austin and I now both have three first place finishes. Mark has one. Mark, Josh, and Austin all have two second place finishes. I have one. Mark has four third place finishes. I have two. Austin has one. And then in terms of fourth place finishes, Josh has five. Austin has one, and I have one. We will get into our lineups. We'll actually have multiple um, FanDuel standing positions on the line this week because not only do we have our normal football contest, but we also have our hot stove Masters Championship contest that we will be breaking down our lineups at the end of the show just like we do every single time. But now, first... Let's get to the trivia question that I have. So there's a little bit of baseball trivia for you guys. A little bit of 2020 baseball trivia. It's not, we're not yeah, baby. back or anything like that. Postseason baseball. Julio Urias gave up 4.3 hits per nine this postseason, which is ridiculous. Yes. I want you to tell me who were the top two pitchers in that stat in the regular season. Shane Bieber. No. Ooh. Sonny Gray. No. Um, starters or are relievers included? They had to be very qualifiers, so they're all starters. The two okay. the two pitchers are starters. So there goes my Devin Williams guess. I was yeah. just gonna say him too. <laughs> uh Clayton Kershaw? Nope. These two pitchers oh. were within four hundredths of a point. Oh. Of a yeah, of a of a point of one another. Let's see, Lucas Giolito, negative. It's no one on the Red Sox pitching staff. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> yes, I, I'd be confident giving that hint that it's no one on the Red Sox pitching staff. Bauer, Trevor Bauer is one of them. Yeah. Trevor Bauer led the league with a five point oh five hits per nine this regular season. Kenta Maeda. Kenta Maeda is not correct. That's a good guess. Yeah, he led, the, he led baseball in whip. That's why I guessed. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I got nothing on him. Hunjin Ryu? Nope. I'm just going through the Cy Young 
nominees. Uh, <laughs> I don't think this guy was not a Cy Young nominee. Not a Cy Young nominee. What are we talking about here? Like, uh, Lamette? Austin is correct. Oh, Denilson. Denilson okay. Lamette was second in Major League Baseball with 5.09. threw me off. Was yeah. he not a Cy Young nominee, or, Mike? Uh, no, he wasn't. He should have been, but he wasn't. He should have been. That's what it was. I was, I was confused. Yeah, so top two in, five, in hits per nine was Trevor Bauer with 5.09, Denilson Lamette. Or Trevor Bauer with 5.05, Denilson Lamette with 5.09. So that's some statistical trivia for you guys. They both had great seasons. Hopefully they can keep it up moving forward. And Josh and Austin both got their points this time around. <laughs> off, Mark. Yeah, that's Mark. right, Mark. This is the first time I didn't get a point during baseball trivia. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, Josh now has 14 and a half points, uh, and Austin has 15 and a half points. So I, I think oh! – What, uh, Mark, you have 31 and a half points. Okay. Um, I like to I have, say – I think the way we're going to do it is that we're going to reset once the new year comes around and we're just going to have trivia run for the entire year. We're going to see how many points we can rack up. Okay. I'd like to, th- I'd like to think that we continue doing hot stove after, after I graduate college. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Not, it's not really a radio show anymore. Yeah. It's, it's a podcast. Radio show, yeah. so it's, it's, you know? Yeah. Um, so we will, we will reset um, in the new year. Anyways. Let's get into our first topic of the day. Uh, and let me actually, we're going to set this up. And Mark sent it, or was it Austin? Austin sent us a picture earlier today. Yeah, it was Austin. Okay, I'm going to try and get it up on my computer while okay. we are sitting here so I can so I can show it. To the oh, you're going to share your screen? Good. It'll give me a little, little reminder, a little remindy. Yes, a little remind, a little remindy do. Um Austin sent us, it was a, what was it? A three by three? Four by four. Four by four. Of, uh, I assume this was just, it was a Facebook post. <laughs> it was on Twitter. I saw it. Right. Barstool, I think. Okay. A Twitter post of, okay. It is incredibly poorly cropped. Yeah. I mean, the picture really, is really bad. Okay. I'm sharing my screen. So, there it is. This is the picture. Um, and it was basically like, pick three baseball movies. Can you guys see that all right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not on my screen. No? It's not on your screen, Mark? Uh, oh, my computer's doing a thing. Just give it a minute. Okay. okay. Well, Mark, we can see your video still fine, so we're good on that part. All right, cool. Um, so it was this picture right here. It was basically like, pick your top three out of these baseball movies. Um, so we are going to each give out. Do you have you guys ranked them of your top three? Uh, um, I, I yeah, I know mine in order. Yeah. Okay, Austin, do you know yours in order? I I, I do. Okay, so we're gonna each. So I actually thought of this idea earlier today, uh, like what we're gonna do after football is over. <laughs> um, what we're going to do is we're going to try and work in some more like list related content, like that kind of stuff. So okay. uh, in terms of formatting for that, I, we're going to each go around, give our number three, each go around, give our number two, each go around, give our number one. You get, you get what I mean? Okay. Okay. Yep. So who wants to start? With their, and it gives me time too, because I still haven't figured out my top three. It, it, who wants to start with their number three baseball movie of all time? It doesn't have to be, I will say it doesn't have to be on this list. It can be any baseball movie because I know there are some that got left off of this list. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll go. I'll go with my third. Okay. Josh, what's your number three? My third is not on this list, and actually, it's the reason I saw this on Twitter because uh, Jimmy Fallon had quote tweeted this with a movie, and he's like, "I think we left one off the list." And Fever Pitch, as I hope Mark, who we just lost, would Ooh. agree on, is an awesome movie, and that's my number three. I don't think I've ever seen Fever Pitch before. Really? Drew Barrymore takes one of the head. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, like a, a, a ripper. Is it's a comedy? Yeah, it's mostly a comedy. Like at one point, yeah, I mean, it's a comedy. Basically, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Fallon's father owned like season tickets in Fenway. And so he's gone there every year. And now his father's dead. And so he's going back and he falls in love with Drew Barrymore. She's a great rom-com, you know. So rom-com baseball movie, fantastic for me. 
So cool. cool. That's my cool. third pick. Austin, what's your number three pick? This was a tough one. I was caught between uh, two, two uh, an oldie and a newie. Uh, I, I went with number three being 42. <clears throat> Uh, I had to, I, I had my other two spoiler comedies, so I had to come out and really show some serious, a serious side here at number three, you know, I had bad news bears originally, um, you know, my list isn't really what are the classics and what is the most popular necessarily. Well, that's not what I was asking. I was asking what are your favorites, but it's it's really my, my favorites. I'm a big humor guy. So bad news bears was, was in there, but 42, I don't know. I love this movie. I thought it was pretty good. It, it, I don't feel like it's getting enough credit on Twitter. You know, if you go through the replies, not a lot of people saying 42. And I, I guess it's not as like rewatchable as some of the other ones because the other ones are comedies. So maybe that's where it's coming from. But I thought it was fantastic. 42 is a really good movie. You know, rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Uh, rest in peace, Jackie Robinson. Rest in peace, Jackie Robinson. <laughs> rest in peace, Harrison Ford. He's not dead, but. He's in the movie. He died For real, in the movie. Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> that's spoiler alert. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my third one, uh, or my number three, couldn't go with a bunch of classics, right? Like, I, I, I got to put something newer in there, right? And my newer pick instead of 42, like Austin went with tonight. And we'll get to the ones that we felt. Do we, do we all have picks that we feel bad leaving out? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk about that later, like after our list right? Like some honorable mentions, if you will. Uh, if you can think of a, like one or two honorable mentions, right? It could easily be a top five, but fuck it. You know, or just do some honorable mentions afterwards. Anyways, my number three is going to be uh, a contemporary movie uh, written by one of my favorite film writers. One of my favorite writers, I guess, because he's written for TV as well. Uh, got Jonah Hill nominated for the Oscar. I'm going with Moneyball at number three. Moneyball is one of my favorite sports stories of all time. I've never read the book. I would like to read the book at some point. Uh, and I just think, I, I mean, personally, I'm a sucker for Aaron Sorkin's writing. Uh, and I, I think that, you know, just generally speaking, it's just a really good movie. Brad Pitt's really good. Sure. At uh, Jonah, who just stepped down from his position like a week ago, actually. I don't know if you guys saw that. Did he? Yeah. Uh, huh. No, I looked it up. Down. I watched it. And who should step down? The current uh, manager of the White Sox. Oh. I thought <laughs> you were going to say Adam Gase. The Wahee Ball. <laughs> Let me start out him, all right? <laughs> uh, so Moneyball is my number three. I really like it. And while we're waiting for Mark to connect. Uh, yeah, he, he's uh, his computer's really struggling. He's in the hot stove chair right now, just going nuts. Oh, okay. So, uh, I didn't even yeah. I, yeah. He's trying here. He's pushing. He's making a push. Okay. Should we talk about the ones that were left off now or go to second? Yeah, yeah. we'll talk about our honorable mentions right now. So uh, I think yeah. – Yeah, Josh, you start with your honorable mentions. My dad would, would have a field day with this list and be completely different from anyone that we're going to pick. Uh, but just for his sake, for the love of the game, another Kevin Costner baseball movie being left out. Uh, <clears throat> dude, there was a perfect game at the end of it. I mean, come on, it's it's just gold. I got a question: uh, Is the one at the bottom right? Is that Bull Durham? It is. Okay. Yeah, he would have. Yeah, I mean his. Yeah. Uh, is, would your dad's three favorites just be the Kevin Costner baseball trilogy? Uh, no. Oh my God, it might be, but he loves the Natural and Major League. If I had to take a guess, and I'll show it to him afterwards, my guess would be his top three in no specific order is Major League, the Natural, and Bull Durham. That'd be my guess. Anyways, um, so per, uh, for the love of the game being left out, obviously fever pitch. And then Angels in the outfield, you made the point. Yeah. Not here. Angels I mean, in the outfield, young, young Joseph Gordon-Levitt, not on not on this list, which I think is ridiculous, but okay. Um, what was the other one that I, I was thinking about earlier? That I was ups- Oh, Cobb. That movie Cobb. It's about Ty Cobb, obviously. I've never seen it. He's pretty good from what I hear. Austin, what were you, what ended up being your honorable mentions? Are you talking just even even ones on this on this? Yeah, uh, ones uh, co- just a couple movies uh, that uh, didn't well, make your top three. You know, you guys, you know, you guys really ravaged this movie in the chat. Uh, a movie I've seen probably over ten times that I still enjoy every single time. A League of Their Own. 
I like the movie. It's actually one of my uh, not my favorites, but it's no like crying it. in baseball. It's, it's a pretty good movie to me. I like it. Um, I'd say another one I left leave out only because it's a classic and everyone loves it. And I don't actually love it as much as everyone else is uh, Sandlot. Um, but I mean, I feel like it's just the classic. When you think of baseball movie, it's 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 a lot of people's first things. Even if it's not the best one of them, it's one of the <clears> first <throat> ones you think about. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. A League of Their Own, one of Rosie O'Donnell's only performances I can get through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I despise her. So. All right. It looks like Mark is back in the chat, or Mark is back here as well. Um, so I- I'll give a couple of my honorable mentions. Uh, Angels in the Outfield is one of them. You know, I don't, I, it, it upset me when that's on the list. <clears throat> I'm not on this list. Like, I don't understand how Angels in the Outfield isn't on this list. What is eight men? I've never seen eight men out before. I've also never seen eight men out. You're telling me eight men outs on here before angels in the outfield is. Isn't that the black Sox one? Might be. I think that's the one about the black Sox. I'm 95% sure. I've never seen it. Also, has anybody seen 61? That's the Roger Maris uh, race for thing. I can't. Eight men out is about the Black Sox, and Maris is also about sixty-one. Would, yeah, would you guys allow bench warmers to qualify as? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, it does qualify, I guess, as a baseball movie. But I. <laughs> and they made fun of us because we pee sitting down. What? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a funny movie. <laughs> it's, it's almost like one of those Christmas movie or like the people go, "Is this a Christmas song?" I mean. It, it contains Christmas, but that's yeah. not really the premise. I mean, <laughs> you're so 12. <laughs> I think it. I think it. you're still out. You're still <laughs> fat. I, I, <laughs> I'm here. Mark is there must be, Mark there must be steroids and macaroni. <laughs> I, I see about. we're talking the bench formers. <laughs> yeah, the honorable mentions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That that should be, I think it's very funny. Um, so my You're, other one that I, I mentioned, um, Angels in the Outfield, uh, and sadly, 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 Field of Dreams is one of my honorable mentions. Didn't quite make the cut of the top three. If it were a top five, it would certainly be in the top five. Uh, yeah. Also, big shout out to Rookie of the Year. That's it. I I, I have thoughts. On, I I'll give my thoughts at the end on each okay. one of these movies. Okay, Mark. So. So first, why don't you tell us uh, a couple, like your four and five. Tell us a couple honorable mentions outside your top three. My four and five would be field, uh, five would be 42 and four would be field of dreams. Cool, cool. Uh, field uh, of, or 42, I'll catch up here. 42 was Austin's number three. Okay. Uh, Mark's number three was for the love of the Josh. game. Josh's. Oh. Or, um, yeah, Josh. Fever pitch. A fever pitch. I'm sorry. Josh's number three was Fever Pitch, and mine was Moneyball. Okay. Um, so, Mark, what's your number three baseball movie of all time? Are just going to let Fever Pitch slide like that? Uh, you know what? I'm not going to say anything. That movie stinks. Uh, <laughs> what? I would thought you'd be into it. You're a Boston guy. That's yeah. Saying, man. And it's, I am a Boston guy, and You're that's part of why you. I don't like it. Ah. <laughs> Huge okay, so so uh, Josh, I got a question. It's on a tangent here. Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie Shallow Hell? Yes. Oh my god. Yes. I have not. I just thought it was the kind of movie that you have seen. Anyways. Uh, yeah. It's, it's. Yep. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Mark, what's your number three baseball movie of all time? Uh, the Sandlot. Sandlot is a great pick. Great pick. Austin already touched on it a little bit. Uh, the Sandlot is in Austin's honorable mentions. It's what? a fan. It has the single greatest summer scene in the history of movies with the 4th of July playing baseball under the fireworks. Yep. Yep. Just I thought it was greatest. when Squints gets that girl to give him mouth to mouth. Wendy Peppercorn scene is also great. I thought that was the greatest American film. <laughs> fun film fun fact. Though. Fun fact. One of my high school uh, tech teachers called me Squints. <laughs> nice. walked in the class one day and he was like so you still married to that uh wendy peppercorn chick or (laughs) all right josh we'll get to you next what is your number two baseball movie of all time josh yep my uh number two just the openly combatant to the pc culture the bad 
news bears. This is an awesome. I mean, hear me out. The baseball in it, tremendous. Just a high quality of it. But just honestly, the the original movie is so messed up. And the things (laughs) I I just love from, you know, lean into one. Obviously, when Tanner just gets so pissed off at everyone, it's an awesome movie to me. I love it. It brings me back to Little League. Love the movie. All right. You guys want a beer? They're 10 years old. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, definitely not that Billy Bob Thornton shit. Anyways, no, no, that one stinks. Uh, Austin, what's your what's your number two? Uh, this one's very close. I think you guys can imagine what's first after you hear what's second. After everything you've heard me say so far, in coming in very close second for me is Bull Durham. Uh, I'm a comedy guy, and this is another one of those. I mean. If we're talking, you know, I'm the big guy. I don't see movies guy. I mean, there's about four movies on this on this list right here that I've probably seen 10 plus times. Bull Durham's one of them. Uh, I think I know. It's a movie going. I think in high school I would watch all the time after school. I just, I don't know. I love it. I can get into these movies at any time. I can rewatch them. I just love them. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. And I think I, think I already know what Austin's number one is going to be. Uh, How do I? <laughs> I'm, a big, I'm a big Coke guy. <laughs> Speaking of cocaine, my number two is Major League. Major League is nice. my baseball movies. Uh, it's one of my favorite comedies. I just love the shit out of it. Just yeah. love the shit out of it. Absolutely love Major League. Give me one second. I told you in preseason. <laughs> uh, we use that line all the time in the Cowboys games. All the time. That's a that's a go to line when watching Cowboys games. Said, oh, I told you. My one of my uh, my <laughs> go to line from that movie is "Fuck you, Joe Boo." I do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite line from the movie. I love it. I use it all. The Shout time. out! It's not nearly as good. Shout out Major League Two because there are some pre- there's some pretty funny stuff in that movie, in my opinion. I don't think I've ever actually seen Major League Two. Neither have I. It, it it's not very good, but there's some stuff that like there's this one character. His name is Kawasaki. He's a Japanese outfielder who's playing for the Indians, and he's very funny. Nice. nice. I'll have to check it out at one point. Mark, what's your number two baseball movie of all time? My number two has the best script out of any of these movies, and that's Moneyball. Yeah! I love Moneyball. Moneyball is an incredible baseball movie. Yeah. Um, there's some – the Chris Pratt, uh, Scott Hatterberg home run scene – to win the 20th game is one of the best baseball scenes in a movie. And fun fact, the reason the baseball is so good in this movie is because the baseball players are baseball players. Fincher wanted low level professional baseball players to be in this movie uh, to make sure he got all the baseball stuff, right? So that's why, and it shows because the baseball in this, while it may be limited is spot on. Yeah, and I was talking about, uh, before you joined back on the call, I was talking about how much I love Aaron Sorkin's writing. Like, I, I love Aaron Sorkin. I I, I, th- I watch way too much Aaron Sorkin material. Like mm-hmm. I'm, So do I. Um, and Moneyball is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I Great will say, script. unabashedly, my favorite Aaron Sorkin-related thing, and I know it's not like the popular thing, my favorite Aaron Sorkin-related thing is The Newsroom. <laughs> Oh, God, that's the one thing I don't like. I like I everything love, else of his except the newsroom. I love it. <laughs> one of my favorite shows. I, I love The West Wing. I love Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, which if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend. It's like a bummer. No, that's Sports Night. I haven't um, seen either of those. Okay. Studio 60 is like SNL. Okay. It's like a behind the scenes at a show like SNL sort of thing, a live sketch comedy show on Friday nights. It's really good. Yeah. I just yeah. thought of one actually, by the way, that's not on the list. Another one. Have yeah. you guys ever seen Trouble with the Curve? Yeah, I like that movie. Yeah. It's with uh, Clint Eastwood, Amy yeah. Adams, and JT. Really it's good. A, I forgot. It's how... aggressively average, in my opinion. Really? I think it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was all right. I love Clint Eastwood. I love Amy Adams. I don't like I forgot about it. Like... Was that a Clint Eastwood directed feature? No. Okay. No. I was gonna say because if it was, that would explain how boring it was. Um, yeah, it's very boring. But Clint Eastwood is is allergic to making interesting movies at this point in his career. 
at this point, yeah, he's Uh-oh. he's had his he's had his fair share of hits. Though, I didn't mean so to I'm, bring out okay a shitstorm for Clint Eastwood. So, my bad. I mean, if you watch any Clint Eastwood movie made after Gran Torino, it's just going to be you're going to fall asleep. I, I like Richard Jewell. I heard that was really good, so I haven't. Yeah, Ri- Richard, Jewell. Richard Jewell was good. Yeah, okay, but like The Mule is the most boring movie I've ever seen. What did you say? The Mule is the most mo- boring movie. I've oh, ever I seen. heard that that was um. <laughs> <laughs> I was more so going to the fact that Jay Edgar was boring and American Sniper was boring. And yeah, what was did he make the movie about the military guys on the train? Yeah, 1517 to Paris, where he actually got the actual guys to play themselves. Yeah, and I feel and bad they can't those act. Guys are, those guys are heroes, but actors, they are not. Like that movie yeah. sucked. That movie was bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, Mark, you just gave your number two. Josh, tell me what your favorite baseball movie of all, all right movies. i'm gonna have to take off the mic because i'm gonna let me get a little loud with this one. <laughs> <laughs> rookie of the year is an awesome freaking movie you austin kept saying rewatch 10 times on 10 this movie was a constant a constant i loved this movie growing up i mean every kid thought they were gonna break their arm and just become a major league pitcher <laughs> after watching. And I was like, all I need to do is snap my arm backwards in a violent fashion, and I can I can be a pitcher for the Chicago Cubs. And so, I mean, especially then the ending is great. His mother being into it, Chet, the Rocket, uh, and uh, what's his name that that's like the manager for him on the team when he does all the stupid stuff. He gets like stuck in between the in between the walls, the hotel, you get stuck in the, in the batting cage thing. Now that awesome, hilariously funny. My favorite, my favorite baseball movie. Nice. Lighthearted. Nice. Austin, what's your favorite baseball movie? Uh, no surprise here. I'm a big Charlie Sheen fan. <laughs> <laughs> Love the major league. Love the whole, you know, the wild thing, the, the touch my oh, wiener man. thing, you know, it's, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just it's just fun to watch every time you watch it. It's just I'm into it. You know, you know some movies you know what's gonna come, and then you go, ah, oh, that kind of ruined. This is not a movie where that ever ruins it for me. You know what's gonna happen, and you love it every time. I love it. Yeah, these movies, these movies give me passion. Major a lot of passion. passion. We'll have to we'll have to tap Austin for more movies that give him passion. I think we talked about it earlier <laughs> today. Um, I think our next episode of After Dark. Is just going to be movie related. I'm I'm very down for that. Oh, yeah, Mark's going to have a little. I don't know any movies. You guys stretch. are going to. Uh, we're going to have to set a date, and I'm going to have to watch some movies for that date. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Actually, that would be kind of funny. So, like, if we set it for a date, and then Austin, Austin basically just watched a bunch of movies and came in and did Austin's movie review. I'd be so down for that. Well, I- to do it, that would be pretty funny. I mean, it could be sometime soon because I'm respecting the veterans tomorrow. So. <laughs> As you should. I'll Austin, Austin gets off tomorrow for Veterans Day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I was I was actually going to propose that we record it this Friday evening. I so. can't do Friday. Could you do Saturday? <laughs> I'm uh, nothing on Saturday. So yeah, I think I, I can do Saturday. <clears throat> yeah, I can do I'll Saturday. Saturday. Mm. I'll be watching the Masters. Well, we can do it later in the evening, so the Masters won't be on anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dark out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it gets dark at 5 o'clock now. So yeah, After dark, it's going to be 5, 5 p.m. <laughs> so that's a little bit of inside baseball, if you will, no pun intended. Uh, if you're watching this far into the episode, which we are already a half an hour in, um, then... I apologize. Yeah, you know, if, we're, if you're watching this far into the episode, uh, we're doing... Uh, we're going to record After Dark this Saturday, so it should be out for you Sunday morning. Look out for that. Um all right, so I, now it's my turn to say my number one. We already yeah. talked about it. It's a classic movie, a classic coming of age film. Probably my second favorite like coming of age film of all time. Like if you want to make that a group of movies, my favorite is Stand by Me. By the way, uh, my second, what would be my second favorite? Got to be The Sandlot. There are so many classic moments. It's such an endlessly rewatchable movie. It's so much fun. It's the essence of summer. Like ah. I just love the Sandlot. I love it, love it, love it so much. Mm-hmm. Not enough good things I can say about the movie. Mark, I'm in, I think I'm most interested in to hear what your favorite baseball movie of all time is. 
Because we've already, well, so we've already, we've already passed Moneyball. We've already passed Field of Dreams. We've already passed the Sandlot. Is it going to be Major League? I'll answer with a question. Are you saying Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball? <laughs> it's Major League. Major League's fucking hilarious. I <laughs> love this movie. Major League is the second best sports movie of all time. Ooh, the second know. only to Caddyshack. I was going to say, that kind of segued me into the question I was going to ask you guys of what's your favorite sports movie of all time. Yeah, Caddyshack is number one for me. And Major League is a very close second. I yeah, close. adore this movie. Happy Gilmore's got to count as a sports movie. So yeah. if, we've yes, it does. if we counted the bench warmers as a baseball movie, Happy Gilmore is a sports movie. All right. Yes, absolutely. Damn straight. Yeah, That's up just, there. Major League is so funny. <laughs> the, I, I, seriously, I say, are you saying Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball way more than I should? Completely okay. out of context. I just say it. We will save that. So, uh, Austin, would you say that you've seen 10 sports movies in your life? Well, I've seen about six baseball movies, so. Okay, so what we're going to do this Saturday, the topic for hot for After Dark will be our top 10 sports movies of all time. Oof. So we'll, yeah, I can do that. We'll put a pin in that, and we will do that conversation on Saturday. How does can that? I just go through these movie by movie real quick? Because I have some very different opinions from you guys. Yes. What is your is your favorite little big league of the ones you haven't mentioned? No, um, I don't like little big league at all. Uh, rookie of the year is one of the dumbest movies I've ever seen. <laughs> How dare you! I, I can't stand Rookie of the uh, Year. Okay, I wanted to say the same thing, Mark, but I didn't want to be disrespectful. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Stupid things. movie. <laughs> it's so bad. Since when does a closer completely turn around your seat? The Cubs were like fifteen really? games we're gonna under do the five hundred. When we're gonna do the since when thing? Have you seen Field? I Rookie? dare you. Have you yeah. seen? Have you seen Angels in the Outfield? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, you guys just don't also like fun. Not good. Angels in the Outfield is awesome, all right? I don't like Angels. Don't like, like the... fun. My, my top two are Bull Durham and Major League. <laughs> yeah, you just don't like children's fun. I'm out here <laughs> spitting on kids. I and said then Bad triumph. News Bears was an honorable mention. <laughs> Bad News Bears is very funny. I like Bad News Bears. I can't understand why Mr. Baseball with Tom Selleck is even in this picture over for love of the game. Um for love of the game is awesome i've always been a fan of that movie the rookie with dennis quaid stinks eight men out is pretty good what uh what i don't I, think the rookie stinks i don't it, like it it's a father-son coming it's a father-son story and okay. old guy trying to get the, back 61 is one of the best made for tv movies ever i got a question does the big lebowski count as a sports movie Holy. Well, i was Astro. I asked, but I would say no. I would say no as well. Because bowling isn't really the the center. King, Kingpin is a bowling movie. Kingpin the Big Lebowski is, awesome. is not. Yeah, I, I agree. Kingpin's it. very funny. All right, I, I've been meaning to watch it. It's on let's, Netflix. Let's stop because Kingpin's going to come up on Saturday. I will guarantee yeah. that. Okay, I'll have to watch it by then. At least from myself. <laughs> like, I love Kingpin. Anyways, yeah, Kingpin is really funny. Um. Yeah. So that's it for our baseball movie conversation. Uh, tune in this upcoming weekend for our conversation about our top 10 favorite sports movies of all time. And I'll actually get to work on that list probably after we finish with this episode. Uh, I I'll, just have to sit, I'll just have to sit and go through my master list of movies and see what my top highest sports movies are. Yeah, I'm going to look up. I'm basically going to like my letterbox doesn't build out that far. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we adding to it? But I'm gonna just go look up a bunch of lists of top sports movies, and like, if I, I I'll see which ones I'm forgetting because I have. Are, one. are we including made for TV? If you want, okay. Do you have a made for TV movie that you would include in there? I assume 61, considering what he just said. No, it's actually not 61. It's Brian Song. Oh. Brian Song is a great movie. Yeah, yeah. Brian Song is going to be on my list. So I didn't know that it was made for TV. Yeah, that's a TV movie. Yeah, I don't know what the hell Brian's song is. It's a movie about um Oh, save me, Mark. Brian Wilson? No. No. It's um Gail I, Sayers and uh Gail Sayers and uh Brian um who wow, I am I uh, wow, top ten movie. You don't even know the guy's freaking name. <laughs> I didn't I, say it was a top I, ten movie. It's, 
freaking James Con. Um, <laughs> this is really bothering me. Brian Piccolo. Mm. Great content. Yeah. So, James, well, we James, will discuss. James Con, Billy D. Williams, awesome movie. We will discuss on this upcoming episode of Hot Stuff After Dark. But in the meantime, we have to get on to actual sports now, 45 minutes into the episode. Uh, so, we are going to jump right into our week nine recap, which is also going to be our episode of Hot Stove Film Room. We're back and we're better than ever. So first of all, before we get into the film room, I, I have two clips that I want to watch. Uh, if anybody else has anything, feel free to let me know. I assume nobody else. Let me get out a magnifying glass so I can see it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to take a moment to gush about the state of the young quarterback in the NFL. Mm. 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 Chef's kiss, so good. Dude, watching, (laughs) I can't, watching the NFL this last weekend, you had the battle between Tua and Kyler. That was a great game. You had Justin Herbert being awesome yet again. Justin Herbert's the man. He's a loser. Shut up. I can't, can't buy a win. Shut the, up. the Chargers yeah, are I mean, losers. At, he... at what point do you bench that loser for a, a known winner? <laughs> True. Like Rod Taylor. Yeah. Justin Herbert is so, and I, I don't like that. You know me, I don't like the comparison game, right? But mm-hmm. an apt comparison that I've seen for Justin Herbert is like, He's just like the not that I not that he's gonna arise to the the status of, but he's like skill set wise the modern day version of Brett Favre. Like, I don't know if he throws enough interceptions for that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. He just makes that shit look sexy, man. Like Brett Favre yeah. always had a way to make every ball that he threw look good, and Justin yeah. Herbert does. Like I've watched each of Herbert's last two games, and. Mm-hmm. Like that, there are at least like two or three throws he makes a game that I'm just like, God damn, that was a beautiful yeah. football. He's toolsy, he's athletic, he looks like he's 12 years old. Love it. <laughs> I, I, I hope he never grows facial hair or anything like that. I love a baby faced quarterback. Yeah. I'm I'm drinking the Justin Herbert Kool-Aid right now. I love watching that kid play. And even then, mm-hmm. Joe Burrow was on a bye this week. You even get to watch Joe Burrow play. Yeah. Joe Burrow's awesome, too. Anyways, young quarterbacks in the NFL are really good. We're in good hands when it comes to when it comes to the NFL. And I, I'm not even men- – I mean, we just did all this. We're not even mentioning Mahomes, who's only 24 years old. We're not men- – <laughs> It's ridiculous that he's that, that yeah. young. Still. We're not mentioning Lamar Jackson. We're not mentioning Deshaun Watson. You know, like – Mitchell like- Trubisky. Dak Prescott. Every- <laughs> Chill, all right. Carson Wentz. Definitely chill, all right. Daniel Jones. I'm trying Danny to keep this Dimes. positive. David I'm Carr. To supposed to be a positive thing. David, David Carr. Carr? 43 year old David Carr who's been retired for a decade. Hey, you haven't seen Not him in the last decade. couple. He played like four years ago. Did you see that uh, on NFL Network or on NFL.com? Like all of their NFL analysts made MVP picks. And everybody picked Russ. Everybody picked Russell Wilson or Pat Mahomes, except for David Carr. And David Carr picked Derek Carr. <laughs> oh, what an <laughs> asshole. What an <laughs> asshole. I love it. I absolutely love it. Also, I'm part of Derek Carr Hive, so like come at me. Man is good at football. All right. Anyways, time for the film room. Let's get back. <laughs> Our full screen. We're going to start with what I think was the throw of the week in the NFL. And I know nobody watched this riveting contest between the Bears and the Titans. And I was telling Austin, (sighs) trust me, it was stinky. But Ryan Tannehill, Ryan Tannehill, made what I think was the throw of the week this week. And it was on his touchdown pass to A.J. Brown. Let's watch it in full speed. And then we'll break it down afterwards. The NFL, the way they've used him so far. Third down and two, and taking a shot to Brown downfield. He makes Ooh. That is smothered. Yeah. Thank you, announcer. Great Sally, too. Let's see if we can get the replay here, because this ball 
is going to be placed. I mean, so you see here, we're cutting to the back end of the route here. AJ Brown is being hugged by Buster Screen the whole time. Like it's, it should have been defensive pass interference, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you watch it here. Look at on him, like white on rice, holding his mm-hmm. arm, holding his, his right arm here. Watch that. You see him? Got the underhook right there. And Ryan Tannehill dropped that ball so firmly in the bread basket. It's unfathomable. That was as perfect of a football that you could throw in that situation. And he, all the while, while AJ Brown was draped, being held by another man. Kind of feeling something. In my nether regions. And then he made a great outreach play to get into the end zone. AJ Brown's the man. That's He's it. agreed. He's the man. Good play. That's all I had to say about that. Next one. Final play. Next one is a little, little less cool to break down, but it's oh, it's it's more it's cool to break down. It's less uh, technical to break down. We're gonna look at Jake Luton, six hey. round rookie out of Oregon State, who played a lot yep. better than I think anybody could have expected from him. There, <laughs> absolutely, I had never heard of him. You said he's out of Mississippi State, Oregon, Oregon State. State. Oh, okay. I was like, what? Jake Luton making the start this week for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we're about to see one of the most athletic plays you will see from a quarterback in the year 2020. Let's watch this touchdown run that Jake Luton gets here. Position with a minute 38 left. Luton. Breaks out from the pocket. Flush. Stiff arms the linebacker. Gets met by a quarter and he gets oh. Oh. <laughs> The spin move by the young man. Had neither I, I, thought, I, I heard the reactions from Austin and Mark. Had neither of you seen that before? Had not seen it. No. No, I heard about it, but I hadn't seen the video. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's a career highlight right there for Jake Lewin. But yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, well, let's watch it again, but from this reverse angle here. Play. Pressure up the middle. All right, so watch. Pocket falling apart as it does mm-hmm. because the Jacksonville offensive line is bad. <laughs> Rolls out to the left. Boom. He thinks he's got an open lane. He's being cut. He's being cut off by the linebacker. So what, what does he do? He doesn't fall. He doesn't falter. He doesn't flinch. He stiff arms him. Bam! Right into the ground. Great stiff arm by Jake Lewin. Now he's got an open lane. He's free. He's home free. Except there's a corner dashing in from the end zone. Maybe a safety. I don't know who it is. Dashing in from the end zone. What does he do? Plants the feet. Whoop! Spin move right into the end zone for the touchdown. That's filthy. This dude's filthy. Speaking of young quarterbacks, Jake Luton. Yeah, speaking of young quarterbacks, you got Jake Luton going out there making that play. Holy shit. Yeah. Anyways. Love it. That's Jake Luton. And that is it for Hot Stove Film Room this episode. It was a quick edition, but you know. So it's yeah, stuff to to watch. It, you know. Yeah, it was some a couple of great clips from this past week in the NFL. I gotta ask you guys, similar to you know what I brought up with the young quarterbacks, what caught your eye from this last weekend in the NFL? Uh I think the Patriots are bad. That game was like a hot dog from a gas station. That game was garbage, but I loved yeah. every single second of it. Oh. I, I mean, I, I didn't touch <laughs> that game of the 10 foot pole. I, I didn't consider oh, I watching it. Yeah. Um, I did but also not watch it. I watched what, of that slop. Seeing that Joe Flacco threw for 260 and three tutties, like, Dude. Joe Flacco, no, no cap here. Joe Don't Flacco do it. played. Don't do it, you bastard. <laughs> Joe Flacco played really well last night. <laughs> like I, I watched oh, it, I, and I, it's, th- I thought I thought you were going to do the elite thing. I thought oh, you were going to say Joe Flacco not. looks elite. I'm normally anti Joe Flacco, um, but like, it's a question to be asked now because of like, dude, the Patriots defense, no bueno right now. The like Jets that. scored 27 points. The Jets. And and if you're watching, like it wasn't just like some dumb stuff happening. Like Joe Flacco and the Jets, they like we brought it up before the call we started the episode. The Jets punted one time last night. 
The Jets walked up and down the field on the Patriots. They had no resistance. Joe Flacco. Stinky. Joe Flacco, perennial believer in himself as a gunslinger, like regardless of how old and bad he is, he continues to throw it deep. It was working. Like I don't like it. And Denzel Mems ate off of that Patriots defense yesterday. I don't like it one bit. I've been I've been telling Austin since Darnold was announced doubtful that I'd have a suspicion, and I it doesn't make sense, but I could see Darnold just being deactivated for the rest of the season and them just letting Flacco go if they're truly in team tank. But then it doesn't make sense to tank for a quarterback and let your young guy just sit if you weren't going to trade him. Yeah. So the logistics aren't there, but for some reason I could see it happening. I think if, actually they, got a I think if that were the case, they would have traded Darnold before the deadline, personally. True. And by the way, I'm full yeah. on the train of trade Darnold to the Steelers over the offseason. Yeah, I'm full on the train of Sam Bar- Sam Darnold's far from being a good quarterback. I am uh, I'm, I'm of the opposite belief. I, I just don't think he's good. I, I haven't seen a single thing from him where I'm like, yeah, this guy. about that electric 50-yard touchdown? Run. Jets football. Nah. Uh, too much Jets football, actually. I would reckon you probably watch too little Jets football. <laughs> no, no, because the Jets are – I don't have – I don't think you can like watch you. I don't think you can ever watch too little Jets football. <laughs> like the, the only football, the only football I really watch on Sunday is what's on network television. And we live in New York. So the Jets are on every so you week. get the bills every week. Yeah. I get, I get the bills and the Jets every week. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> thing, right. Like I I'm uh, to an extent, I'm a believer in the system, right? Like, I don't think it's fair to say that Tom Brady's only good because he played for the Patriots. Like I'm not that crazy. Like I, Nothing mm. makes me upset more than a Tom Brady's the system quarterback argument. Um, mm. But I will say that I still don't know whether or not Sam Darnold is good, but I don't put any of that blame on Sam Darnold. <laughs> like yeah, that's not, fair. Not an ounce. I put the blame on the front office for putting nobody around him. And then the front office for after finally setting up the possibility to rebuild with draft capital and money for going and wasting it on Adam Gase. Like they went, they went from having no assets and nothing around him with a capable coach in Todd Bowles, who's a better defensive coach than he is an offensive coach, but Mm -hmm. capable coach to firing the coach using those assets on good players and then getting Adam Gase to coach the team. Yeah. I still don't know if Sam Darnold is good. I think physically, traits wise, I think he's good. When I watch him, he throws a good ball. I think he has good pocket vision. Like I, I think Sam Darnold's a good quarterback. And he's just so damn young. Yeah. Like he's still so young. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I get that. It's just trade him I'm... to pitch him. Congrats yep. on Mike Tomlin, by the way. Or congrats, congrats to Mike Tomlin. What two things this past week? Uh, became yeah. the leader in all time wins by a black head coach and oh. also uh led his team to their 14th straight non losing season, which is the most by any coach in NFL history. 14 yeah. straight awesome. seasons with at least cool. mind it, you, they played a full season with Devlin Hodges and Mason Rudolph as their quarterback last year. Yeah, I was I was gonna say the fact that he <laughs> led that team to be above 500 last year. I get their defense was ridiculous, but with that with that offense last year, the fact that they finished what nine and seven, eight and eight. No, they were eight and eight. Yeah, but still wild. Yeah, yeah. So congrats to Mike Tomlin. But I'm of the I'm of the trade Sam Donald to either. Pittsburgh or Indianapolis Hive. Let's get that going. Speaking of Pittsburgh, they had me worried in the first half. Uh, they had me worried throughout the entire game, Mark, you insensitive prick. What are you talking d- about? Minus a couple of garbage calls, the Dallas Cowboys win that game. <laughs> Fact. Uh, Fact. I don't, the NFL I don't roots for the comeback far too much. I don't they think the NFL roots for anything because I don't think the NFL actually has control of what the game's outcome is. Dell clicks the little button. Gets in the air, and things happen. Jalen Smith yeah, Buffalo touches Wild a guy. Wings? Maybe. We don't know. <laughs> the Buffalo Wild Wings commercial. I mean, yeah, I, I had to make a Awful officiating. 
And then what the, the creme de la creme was after Jalen Smith's uh, uh, roughing the passer where he, he got the head, the head hit. Uh, Brady equally got hit the first play of the game in uh, for their drive. He got hit in the head and no call. The officiating's a joke. I will say yeah, that speaks more so to the inconsistency of the officiating yeah. rather than like some vendetta against the Cowboys because we know that if they were going to call that on anything, like they would for sure call that in favor of Tom Brady if that were the case. Yeah. If they had some like specific agenda, like you know that Tom Brady would be the first court could pers- uh, persona non grata, first person to, to protect would be Tom Brady. Sure. I mean, also, yeah, it was garbage. Wise, wouldn't just wouldn't just rigging it for the Cowboys be the best thing to do? Yes. Yeah, that's what it doesn't make sense. Only Pittsburgh could get the outrig in my mind. I don't think that's how that works, but okay. The um, outrig. <laughs> yeah. Unsurprisingly, I don't think anything is rigged. I just think that the Cowboys are a bad team. Uh, so when they lose, very bad. Team, surprise you. The Steelers should get more blame for just being stinky poo poo. They, they did not look good at all in the first half, as Mark said, and they got bailed out in the second half. They looked bad. They couldn't they couldn't touch Garrett Gilbert with an offensive line that can barely hold up me and Zach running at the quarterback. And mm. their defensive line didn't really – I mean, sorry. And their offensive line couldn't withhold Randy Gregory. Randy Gregory was a man possessed that week. Uh, they looked faulty on both sides of the ball. I, mean, I don't know what you want me to say. They all should have won the game. It is honestly – I mean, it's okay for a team to have a down week. Like, it happens, you know? Like, they've had many a down weeks. They arguably, they should have lost to every NFC East team they've played. Arguably. They should not. They had them on the ropes. They they whooped on the Giants, but yeah. Was was it a whoop? Danny Dines threw for 303 in that game. But most of that was garbage time. No. Like, I don't remember that game being close. Yeah, I don't think that game was close. It was close. Sure, on the scoreboard, yeah. It was close. Don't the Bears game this past week was close on the scoreboard. Uh, I mean, the Giants scored six points in the fourth quarter in that game. It was twenty to ten at half, or sorry, sixteen to ten at half. Yeah, I almost I almost cut off my finger with this bad (laughs) quote. Jesus, I don't know. I I have another big time congrats to throw out. What's that? Congrats to the Falcons for not quite blowing a fourth quarter lead. Damn close. It, it was really was, close. Was... But congrats to them for being able to hold on. Team with the second most quarters led or possessions led in football this year, the Atlanta Falcons, which are three and six. Wow, that's a stat right there. Yeah, I saw that today and I was like, that is wild. I did not know that that was a stat. It was like the Steelers, the Falcons, and like Seahawks, Packers, Chiefs, or something like that. Hmm. Interesting. Awesome. What was? Did you have any big takeaways from the week? What what, what thing are you going to hate on today? What thing can I hate on? I don't have much to hate on. I don't think this week. This week was pretty standard. Uh, the Eagles didn't well, play. That's why I liked a lot of. Yeah, you know, maybe <laughs> the Eagles not playing. Oh, there you go. Mark said it at the top of the. I don't think. Were we? Did we start the show at that point? I don't know if we did. I don't we know. said it at the top of the, the show. Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't want to lie to everybody. Uh, I maybe watched the most enjoyable game in the history of NFL football. Watching the Saints absolutely oh. destroy the team that was destined to win the rest of their games one hundred to nothing. I I just found no more enjoyment than. That team I'm sh- struggling. I'm I'm shocked you enjoyed that because don't you hate Taysom Hill? No, that's I, me. Oh, uh, that's also that. okay. hate. Awesome. Through the season, uh, this team is going to win win the Super Bowl. I, I, it's all nonsense to me. I like you know I like people being reserved about their opinions, saying most teams are in this kind of tears. At, at once Antonio Brown signed, it was like. People oh, there go the on box. social media were like, this team is unfair. LOL Warriors question mark. What is going on? I was like, well, calm. Well, I mean, down. I mean, it's fair to have that assumption though. I mean, not, not to the extent of like the greatest team on God's great earth, but like, I, I think up until this week, it was fair to assume that they were probably, and I would probably still say that they're the second best team in the NFC. Um, 
they have a loaded defense and they have a good offensive line. You got Tom Brady as your quarterback. You just added Antonio Brown. Like, so I don't know if I'm maybe attacking who you think's the best team in the NFC by saying this, but uh, are we going to talk about the fact that Seattle can't beat a team who has a winning record? They just cannot beat good teams. Mm-hmm. They have two losses on the season. Uh, like, yeah, but they've, they've been – correct. Three. Sorry, three now. Weren't they both six and two? Arizona, Buffalo, and – Let me see. I don't know. No, I thought this C- was it says third. Seahawks are six and two now. Oh, yeah, maybe that – They've already had their bye. <clears throat> yeah. So, Buffalo and, and Arizona. Yeah. But they haven't beaten a team with a winning record. That is – Subject of the schedule. At the moment. They beat I don't Miami. know. Miami's five and three. Um, oh yeah, at the time they played them. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So yes, that's true. I mean, I, 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 I don't know how much, how much actual weight I put in that. I and mean, their defense isn't very isn't good. Yeah, that's going to be a really problem if that doesn't get better. I mean, I yeah, their defense has good, not played better, good. But like, if it just doesn't. It's really bad. Yeah, but also, like, nah, their defense hasn't been good in, like, three years. In four years. But, I mean, it's never been this. I mean, this, they're, like, That's they're like 60 yards worse than any yeah. other team in the league in yards per game given up. Yeah. The least amount of points they gave up in a game was 23 to Miami. Yeah. Like, their their run defense is starting to get good for what that's worth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I was telling Austin earlier that I'd rather have a good pass defense and a bad run defense, otherwise known as the Kansas City Chiefs, and yeah. that have a good and then run just defense. Take the lead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean that's because that's what the, the Bills came out and just said we're not going to run the ball. We don't. Yeah. We don't have to. The Bills. <laughs> yeah, and Pete Carroll said himself was he said it took me about two possessions to realize that the Bills were not going to run the football, so yeah. they played. He said about two snaps or something like that. So they played like five to ten snaps in nickel, and the rest of the game, mm-hmm. not like they, like they, yeah, yeah. I mean, they yeah, Allen went off. He, like they could not stop Josh Allen in the Bills' offense. Yeah, that was pretty gross. As someone who, uh, you know, previously liked to uh, call the Bills uh, a faker, still, I. I, I don't know. I don't really have – it's not plausible at this point in time. So, till further notice, I will be silent on the Bills. Nah, you got to hold fact. Don't don't jump ship you just because – You can't have it both ways, can you? You can't say Seattle can't beat a team with a winning record, but then say Buffalo is bad. You yeah. can't say they're both bad. Okay, but then – so then your argument of uh, – okay, never mind. <laughs> that well, a 6-2 yeah. and two team and a 7-2 and two team are bad. I'm not saying either of them yeah, are bad. I mean – no, no, no. I get it. The logic get, doesn't hold up. No, no, no. The See, logic does no. not hold up. As the negative guy here, I understand what he's getting at. <laughs> this season in the NFL, when you watch these teams play, you're not you're never blown away. It's like when you watch them play, there was always some major flaw that you're like, this this is holding this team back. And it feels like there's not a team that's pulling away from anybody to me. Uh, that's except if your name is the Kansas City Chiefs. But yeah. Um, well, yeah, I can give you that. <laughs> Um, Mahomes did that thing again this week. He yeah, does. Oh, yeah, Mahomes <laughs> reminded everybody, "Hey guys, I'm the league MVP." No, no, change. yeah, it's... <laughs> no change in that one. Um, yeah, I mean, also, but I also think that's kind of a good thing, right? Like, I, I, I do as well. I like mm-hmm. that. I'm here for it, right? I will say a little fun factoid before we move on to this upcoming week uh, is that the. Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday night set the record, the NFL record for least rushing attempts in a game. Five, right? And one of them was Blaine Gabbert at the end of the game to take the knee. Correct. Yeah, Yeah, so four. As a team. That's just. That's stinky. That's what happens. That's what happens when the game. I mean, so that's, that's kind of my thing about it, right? Like I didn't, I don't think I actually learned anything watching Sunday night. No, one team just came out to play in one day. I don't think I learned anything about either team. When a game gets that out of hand that quickly, like yeah. nobody has any pressure to do anything important. Like it was over at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> like yeah. we watched three quarters of meaningless football. I don't really think we learned 
anything. I feel like this Sunday. happens to Either teams game. where, like, you get down so big, and then it kind of happened to the Cowboys, like, two years ago when Zeke was clearly the option, but they tried to force Dak too much when he was, like, trying to be the MVP. Or last year, maybe. And, like, mm. there's just something where if your team does something better, you, it wouldn't, regardless of score, in the second quarter, just run the ball. If you're down 21 to nothing, just try and get a point. It doesn't matter. You're not trying to play catch up yet. Just play how you play. And then mm-hmm. things will happen. you got to hope that it turns around. That's not how Tampa Bay plays. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, I'm not saying they're, they're, yeah, their offense is different than Dallas, but yeah. to a certain don't just go shotgun five wide and try and make up the points so quick. Like, you can, it, mind you, again, it probably wasn't going to matter. They That's were just playing Steve. Off of Bruce Arians' offense. Yeah. I mean, they were just, <laughs> I, on that given day, it wouldn't probably have met. They already waste but, their time feeding a bad running back anyway, so what's the point of trying anyway? Two bad running backs. Whoa. I'm kidding. Ronald Jones looks good. I know. Well, start. Unless you're trying time, to get Leonard Fournette is somehow the good one in that backfield. I thought I, I thought I turned the Nunez. worst running back. I thought, I thought I had turned Nunez there, and the Rojo is no good. Absolutely <laughs> not. Ah. I don't I don't. I just don't get how you can watch him and say no good. I guess you could say he's fumbled three times this year and gotten benched for the rest of the game every time. Yeah, Bruce Aarons does that. That's not anything different. He, so yeah, that's just a Bruce. <laughs> he's not so good at fumbling. Awful. He's not good at holding on to the ball, and he also has bricks for hands. So, yep. It's so awful to watch. I, I and and he it, but... is really bad at pass protection. So, like, it, 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 that's – yeah, that's beside the point. Anywho, yeah. um, move on to week 10. I don't really have any games in particular, I think. I don't know. Like, this game is – this week is kind of uninteresting to me. Yeah, looking at the slate. Yeah, maybe Bill's it, Cardinals. Maybe it's because I have – yeah, maybe it's because I haven't looked at it very much. But, like, Bill's Cardinals should be good. Of course, I'm salivating for this Justin Herbert versus Tua Tagovailoa matchup. Yeah, that will be a good game. I need that in my veins. Seahawks, Rams. Excuse me. That game should be a shootout. That'll be fun. Yeah. We get to I think the States beat another team by 50. Oh, God. <laughs> I think you get the battle of the NFC East here for first place. Giants-Eagles. Yeah, that game will be but it'll be bad. Like, oh, it'll be terrible. Oh. It'll be the same thing as the Thursday night game. That was a bad game. I mean, can we have some Where? respect here? No. I mean, no we're respect. Talk, we're talking about one of the best teams in the league. Which one? The Giants? The New York football the New York Giants. Football Giants? I'm all right. I'm straight. Okay. I don't think I'm, I'm – I don't – yeah. I'm serious when I say that I think they're not a bad football team. Oh, that's interesting because I do. No, I, I think they're a very bad football think team. I they're a 8-8 eight and eight team. I, I think that's where they lie. I know they're going to end up, whatever, 5-11. and 11. I don't care. If they're lucky. I don't even think it's if they're lucky. They've been in every game they've played except, what, the San Fran game? Was that the game they got blown out in? Yeah, yes. I believe so. I, I, think, they so. Barely, I think they got steamrolled by the Rams. They barely <laughs> lost to the Bucks, which they, they should have won. They barely lost to the Eagles, which they should have won. They barely lost to the Cowboys, which they should have won. They barely lost to the Bears, which they should have won. They're, they they're, won in, they're in a lot of games. That's they're true. in a lot of games. I don't they think are. They're Say they are, and I think that their defense is a lot better than it's given credit for. I think um, the Rams game they only lost seventeen to nine, so really? it was just it was just the San Fran game, just, which was thirty six to nine. The rest of them are. I mean, the, you know, the, the Steelers game they lost by two possessions, I think, but they lost by ten. The yeah, San they lost Fran by 10. game. The San Fran game was really bad too because it was the week after everybody got injured. Yeah, for the Niners, and they still came out and like beat the brakes off the Giants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was bad. I don't know, man. I just don't think the Giants are good. I don't think Daniel Jones is good. I don't think their defense is good. I don't think they have the fifth ranked <sighs> rushing defense in football right now. Defense is good. Yeah. I think they also have a top five corner in the league right now. I don't know about that, but he's been playing like it. He's good. I like the, you know what? You know what it is? One corner does not a good pass defense make. I just like high volatility quarterbacks. That's what it is. Oh, that's interesting because I, I would prefer that to not be the case. <laughs> I, it's passion. It's just passion to watch Danny Dimes go out there 
and throw good passes when his guys can't catch and throw bad passes when his guys are wide open. It's just, you love it. You love to see it. You go, this team's one step away from making good plays, but they just suck. Yeah. I do <laughs> kind of love a gunslinger. I'm with Austin. Yeah, yeah but he is. there's a difference between being a gunslinger and being reckless. Like, Justin Herbert's a gunslinger. Daniel Jones is reckless. <laughs> like, like a good reckless quarterback, especially when it's for another team in my favorite team's division. Yeah. You know? Just, uh, just it's, I like watching the Giants lose yeah, every week unless they play the football team. I don't know. I tell you, I love watching the Giants play, and it's not because I like watching them lose. I'll tell you, like what I'm most looking forward to is finally being two games back in the division so that I can stop thinking that we're going to win the division anyways. <laughs> <laughs> this week, while we won't lose for once, we will lose ground on first place, and that's going to be good. Also, fun that we've announced that Dalton's the guy just to further improve on the tank. I, I don't know. That makes no sense to me. It really doesn't. I don't know. If you actually want to win, like, because that's what they're saying, if they want to win, why would you play Dalton instead of Garrett Gilbert, who looked against Pittsburgh's stout D, looked pretty good for most of the game? Looked uh, pretty athletic. Rolled out, made some mm-hmm. plays. I mean, honestly, not what he expected to happen. No. Yeah, and, I, he looked a lot better than I And just in terms to. of how the offensive moved the ball, way better than any game Andy Dalton played in this year. Mm-hmm. Fact. I, I don't know. I don't know what the strat here is. I don't know if I'm just getting big brained by Jerry Jones right now. I got a lady <laughs> what? <laughs> I got a lady bug. How about this? You know, how, about, how about a home team with a better record than their opponent, the dog, trying to hang on to the cliff that they're about to fall off the the Chicago Bears trying to gather anything they can to muster a win. Can we not like, talk about the Bears until something has changed? <laughs> Like it's the same thing every week. I don't this, want to have this conversation. Yeah, is a, this is a big game because I'm. I reckon they win this game. You could almost call them a lock for the playoffs. They lose this game. You start to get scared that they just let this snowball out of control. Yeah, this is this is going to be the real turning point of the season because their schedule gets pretty easy moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, they have Minnesota, and then after the bye, they get Green Bay, Detroit, Houston, Minnesota, Jacksonville, Green Bay. They still got those two Green Bay games. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm convinced that they can split one game with Green Bay. I'm convinced of that. You, I've you seen games. offense starts playing football. Yeah, but also we've seen what happens when a defense actually challenges Aaron Rodgers. What happened in the Bucks game. Yeah. True. That's what I expect this, this uh, coming Monday night. I, I expect we see a Kirk Cousins team. Oh. I, I have a feeling – look, the Bears, first of all, have owned Kirk Cousins the last couple of years. Second of all, mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins is bad against teams with a winning record. Third of all, mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins is really bad on primetime and specifically on Monday Night Football. So, oh, yeah. Isn't he the worst Monday Night Football oh, quarterback he's ever? He's like, oh, I don't, yeah. think, I don't think he's won. Yeah. Yeah. No, he'll find a way this week. I don't know. I, I don't really want to talk he'll about it. He'll find a way this week. <laughs> I don't really want to talk about it. I, I kind of agree with Dunia. I have a strange feeling Kirk Cousins is throwing for 380 and four touchdowns. Kirk Cousins is incapable of doing that because he will throw a maximum of 28 times. So Yeah, exactly. He's throwing. Unless he's, uh, unless he's Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> yep. Constantly. No, that's what he's going to do. He, he's going 25 air yards per throw. Yeah. Okay. The Bears defense will not. That does. That, okay. That, no. Stop. 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 We're done. Okay. Moving on. We're going to talk about. FanDuel is what we're going to do. So do you guys want to do our NFL Week 10 lineups first, or do you guys want to talk about the Masters first? Do football first, right? We're in it. We just end on some. Yeah. Anyone yeah. else have a preference? Yeah. I, I say do football first. Okay. Cool. Who wants All right, to well, If you guys want your winners, I'll go. As, as the leading loser in, in hot stove, I'll kick it off. No, No worries here. Leading it off for your Starbucks stinky sixty poo-poo, point stinky sixty poo-poo, point lineup 60 of the week. Point lineup of the week. <laughs> We've got the old man. Not not great on the zip factor, but against this San Francisco team, True Breeze. Line him up for seventy six hundred. He's there. 
quarterback, avoiding the stack I am this week because the stack, it's no good to me. The stack well, is no good. Also, I will say, so uh, bring it down here. I don't think we've had this conversation really about roster construction. You know, in a game like this where you're playing a cash game, like a stack doesn't really matter all that much. But like mm-hmm. I built, I'll, I'll go over it. My lineup for this week in our contest is a full blown tournament lineup. So I have a game stack as well as a secondary stack and like that kind of stuff on top of it. So that's just different roster construction for cast games versus GPP. Anyways, Josh. Yep. I just, I just picked the guys. That's why I'm losing probably. <laughs> Next up, I got two questionable running backs hoping to make their return. Need him in the fantasy. Here we go. Joe Mixon. Need him to get back on the field. Obviously, you know, I don't know if he has a partner, but they'd probably like him on the field too. Keep him out of the house. He's a danger there. Get him on the field. <laughs> Miles Sanders also needs to come back to the field for the love of God. Get this man healthy. Get him some ankle braces and get him out there. Uh, also, in my lineup, my new number one wide receiver because, uh, well, he leads the league in receptions and receiving yards. Stephon Diggs at 7,900. He's my uh, number one, followed by Cooper Cup in what deems to be a high-scoring game in that Los Angeles-Seattle game. And uh, the steal of the week, 6,800 for Travis Fulgham. Seems to be Wentz's Hmm. number one. Hmm. You know, Ragor coming back may cut into that, but, dude, this guy has got the stuff from what it seems like so far, and I like him. Also, I like, we just talked about this team, the best team in the NFC East with the best tight end in the league, leading the league in tight end targets, I believe, Evan Ingram. Ecstatic. Love that guy. Finally got involved last week for a good fantasy point outage for him. Uh, The flex position, we go to old reliable in Cincinnati. He's good for about 6 and 60 normally every game. Tyler Boyd, he's locked in there against Pittsburgh, who's shown weaknesses in the passing defense, Joe Burrow on the lead run, ugh, on the on the pace, pacing for the rookie uh, rookie passing rookie, yard record. R- rookie run. Am, am I drunk? What the hell is going on? <laughs> uh, and Carolina's three thousand dollar defense because it's the cheapest, and I don't care about defenses. I almost wasn't going to start one. All right, there Josh, we go. Josh, how much uh, money do you have left? Zero, nil, nada. I was just wondering. I, I I didn't I didn't catch if you had any something either. I uh so I will say I this is a fun statistical fact um about Delvin Cook this year. I know you didn't you didn't have him in your lineup, but I, I just no. was fun to bring it up. Delvin Cook his 15 game pace because he missed a game this year. His 15 game pace this season is 2,600 yards and 24 touchdowns. <laughs> I think that's good. That's a 15 game pace for Delvin Cook. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's got to slow down, right? Awesome. You go next. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I went with, you know, just a dominant lineup. I mean, this lineup, I'm going to beat you guys by 60 points. Not close. I went with the um, a great stack here of, of a bad quarterback and an underused receiver, Jared Goff and Robert Woods. Robert Woods, he gets all the touchdowns there. They love to feed him touchdowns this year. Last year, two total touchdowns. This year, he's he's got three rushing touchdowns. They find ways in the red zone to get him a touchdown. Jared Goff also not getting vultured this season by Todd, a Todd Gurley, the vulture himself, uh, is back to throwing for touchdowns again. Um, I love mm-hmm. to see it. Uh, and they're playing – Seattle, who just made a Buffalo offense who looked terrible for three weeks, come back and just dominate. I mean, I, I think the Seattle team could make make us four go out there, play pick, pitch and catch, and look pretty good. I mean, honestly, I'd like to I'd like to know my chances. Uh, my my two favorite running backs in the NFL that aren't hurt at the, well that aren't out for the season at the moment uh, are my running backs Antonio Gibson and Miles Sanders. Uh, Antonio Gibson, the Detroit Lions. Uh, you know, everyone's talking about Dalvin Cook running for 200 yards, right? Alexander Madison also ran for 75 yards. In that game. <laughs> uh, Detroit cannot stop the run. I don't think that Washington really wants to get into this shootout type pace game with uh, Detroit. I think they want to keep it with their short passing to the running backs, running the ball. Antonio Gibson 
didn't get as many touches as he should last week. I think they want to get him back the ball. He's explosive. You know, Miles Sanders, the Eagles, the Eagles, you know what? I'm saying this because I think they should run the ball. Not that they think they will run the ball. So we'll stay tuned for that one. Who knows if he stays in my lineup. Doug Peterson sucks. Um, Receiver, uh, the receiver I said I would take every week, and now it's been two weeks in a row that I didn't take him. Devontae Adams, I'm putting him in my lineup. I don't care. I don't care if he's playing the 85 Bears in their 11-man covering. He's going to get seven or eight catches for at least 100 yards, and he'll get at least five red zone targets. That's all I need. That's all I need to see. I mean, he's going to see the ball. How about a guy scoring touchdowns for my last receiver? Uh, touchdowns and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six straight games here for Will Fuller. Uh against a bad Cleveland secondary. Um, not much more you have to say. Deshaun Watson's playing great football, and Will Fuller's his favorite guy, so you have to love that. Um, tight end, a matchup that was successful just a couple weeks ago in this matchup, Evan Ingram against the Eagles. If he doesn't drop that gate ball at the end of the game, he's ending up up towards the 80, 90 yard mark on, on nine to 10 targets. Uh, I see the same thing happening. Could you name an Eagles linebacker that's playing? No, you can't. So you got to love Evan Ingram. And then Josh loved his cheap receiver. Now I'll tell you a cheap receiver who in every game he's finished this year. No, not many has had at least 10 targets. Uh, That is Deontay Johnson. He is 5,700 on FanDuel against the game that I actually expect to be a little bit higher scoring than than people might expect. Um, He's kind of, now hear me out. If he finishes the game, he's going to get 10 targets. He might find the end zone. It doesn't really matter if he gets 10 targets. He's worth 5,700. And then my defense has to be the most statistically, analytically best defense this week. Kirk Cousins, prime time Monday night against a good Bears defense. Bears defense, 3,600. I, I, it's shockingly low against Kirk Cousins in prime time when the Bears defense has been playing well. That's a, uh, that's a steal. It's a steal for a defense. Uh, I like a lot of sacks, and I like fumbles in that game. Kirk Cousins, he's shaky. And so that's my lineup. I'm going to score 156.13. None of you guys will get 100. Good luck. All right. Well, that's that's a lineup, all right. <laughs> um, for my lineup, we're going uh, – Couple of things similar to Austin here. My vitamin water virgin lineup of the week. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a, uh, we've got the same stack there, Austin. Jared Goff, Robert Woods. I agree. Robert Woods just keeps getting targets in the end zone. They love throwing to, and um, they love throwing to him. Uh, I liked the whole three rushing touchdowns. They just try to find a way for him to score, so I like him this week. My two running backs, I'm going with James Robinson against a bad Green Day run defense and Kareem Hunt against an also bad Houston run defense. James Robinson at 7,300, Kareem Hunt at 7,500. James Robinson, the only effective offensive player on Jacksonville, pretty much. So I kind of like him this week. For my other two receivers, I also went a little on the cheaper side. I did take Allen Robinson against Minnesota. I think, you know, he's just a lock to get somewhere between eight and 12 targets a week. And, you know, 6,900 is pretty good for that sort of value. Um, And then my steal of the week is a guy who went off last week. He's seen his target share go up each of the past two weeks, and that's Jerry Judy. Uh, Drew Locke back in Denver. Judy's only 5,800. So with Drew Locke being back, he's throwing to another to a young receiver. I think uh, Judy has a pretty good chance against a middle-of-the-pack Las Vegas defense. Uh, my tight end, I'm going with Eric Ebron against Cincinnati. Pittsburgh probably going to win that game rather handily. Um, so I think Ebron will get a few targets. And my flex is just so good. DK Metcalf is a freak of a human being. 
It doesn't matter who's covering him. He's going to beat him. He's going to outrun him. He's going to be stronger than him. So this guy just goes off against whoever he's covered by. And I don't see the Rams secondary being a problem for him this week. And my defense is also the Chicago Bears. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I got some uh... – <laughs> don't point it out. That was on accident. My bad. Um, <laughs> uh, um... Whoa. By the way, UB has outgained Miami of Ohio in the third quarter, 228 to 20. Are they putting a the stop on? And they just scored another touchdown. It's going to be 35 to 7 at the end of the third. Ah! <laughs> um, that guy! Right. That guy! That guy! Right. <laughs> that guy. Ah! <laughs> um, can't, can't wait for it to be 49. So, <laughs> I am going to go and show you guys how it's done making a tournament lineup, right? So maybe it's not the best for the G- for the cash game that we're playing here with Hot Stove, but this is my tournament lineup. So the first thing you want to do is you want to target games with high over-unders, games that you think there's going to be a lot of scoring opportunity in. Now, maybe it's not the highest over-under of the week. That's probably Rams, uh, Seahawks. But I went with a game that I think could be the sneaky over of the week. My quarterback, my game stack, because I went with players on both sides of the ball here. My game stack is Tua Tagovailoa, at my quarterback, because I think he is criminally underpriced this week, coming off a good game against the Cardinals where he had 21 and a half fantasy points. He's going up against a beatable Los Angeles Chargers pass defense, and he's only 6,800 on FanDuel this week. That is worse than Gardner Minshew, who's not playing. So take Tua Tagovailoa. And instead of going with Devontae Parker, you know, people would assume that if Preston Williams is going to be out, Devontae Parker is going to be the guy. That's true. But I'm going to go with the contrarian pick, and I'm going to pick Mike Gesicki as my tight end this week against the Chargers. You know, it's been bumpy, bumpy sailing for Mike Gesicki this past week. This past week, he did have 42 yards on three catches. He's an efficient guy, and maybe he can break loose and get a touchdown in this one. On the other side of the ball, I got Justin Herbert's favorite target on planet Earth, and that's Keenan Allen. This man is a absolute lock for at least 10 targets every single week. I don't care the price. He's probably, he's only 7,800. So that means that Keenan Allen is still probably underpriced when it comes to his value. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's wide receiver six in terms of uh, pricing this week. And honestly, the target share should be even higher. Now my secondary stack, a stack not involving a quarterback. That's my secondary game stack is actually I took both of the running backs in the Jacksonville Green Bay game. My two running backs are James Robinson and Aaron Jones. Both run defenses are bad. I probably I would put money on both of these men to score this week. And I love, love, love the volume for both of them. They're both going to get north of 20 touches, probably a couple pass patches for each of them. Love it, love it, love it, especially in a GPP lineup. My other two wide receivers are Allen Robinson, who Mark said are a lock, is a lock for at least eight to 12 targets every week. When you're a fun fact about the Vikings pass defense, seven of the last eight receivers to get at least seven targets against the Vikings have had either 75 yards or a touchdown against the same Vikings. And I'd probably take Allen Robinson – to get over both of those thresholds. For some reason, I feel like this is going to be the squeaky wheel game for Allen Robinson. He's been out-targeted by both Anthony Miller and Darnell Mooney in the last two weeks. Uh, Part of that is due to him leaving the Saints game early, but still, Darnell Mooney and Anthony Miller both have 24 targets each of the last two games, uh, and Allen Robinson only has 20. I like this to be that squeaky wheel game for Allen Robinson. I got Cooper Cup, you know, uh, not much to say. That game should be a shootout in Cooper Cup. He's the man. That's it. Last time we saw him on the field, he got 20 targets. Mm-hmm. He's the man. Maybe he'll score a touchdown. Then I got a bounce back candidate this week. And that man is on Thursday night, Corey Davis of the Tennessee Titans. Now, before last week, where he had three targets, no catches against the Bears, in two games previous against the Bengals and the Steelers, He had 10 targets in both games, had 14 total catches for 163 yards and two touchdowns. 
against the Bengals and the Steelers. I still don't think this Colts defense is as good as it looks. I'm still not buying it. I think this is get another sneaky over game this week. On Thursday night football, I like Corey Davis to bounce back, and maybe his roster percentage will be kind of low based off the dud, the quite literal goose egg that he had last week. And that leaves me with just enough money at 3600 for the Chicago Bears on defense. Not much else to say. Kirk Cousins, not good under the lights. The Bears defense, good. That's it. They're just good. All right. So we'll move on now, and we will talk about – this upcoming weekend, Augusta National, the greatest event in all of golf. A tradition unlike any other. A tradition unlike any other. Tiger Woods just picked the dishes for the champion's dinner at the <laughs> National, the National, at the Masters, taking place this weekend. First time it's a fall, na- a fall Masters. Yeah, yeah, usually in April. Kind of nuts that the last time. <laughs> The Masters was played. The Game of Thrones season or series finale was happening. Mm-hmm. I saw that the other day, and I was like, "Damn, that feels like ages ago." Yeah. It was six years ago, Josh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> should be beautiful weather this weekend in Georgia. Azaleas will not be in bloom, sadly. Sadly, who wants to go? Flower. And tell me about their Masters lineup. We're also doing a hot stove Masters contest this weekend. I just had to change mine up a little bit. Oh. Uh, I had Joaquin Neiman, but he, he's got the big Roni. Mm. So I had to switch him out. Uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, I'll start. First guy, talk about value. Hasn't missed a cut this year. It's five for five, averages 73 fantasy points per tournament. He's $7,000. He's tied for the cheapest in the entire field, and that's C.T. Pan. Wait, is $7,000 really the cheapest in the field this time around? Yeah. Yeah. Yum. <laughs> C.T. Pan, tied for the cheapest. I love that value. C.T. Pan's a very good golfer. Um, and like I said, he doesn't miss cuts. I've got another guy who just doesn't miss cuts, and that's Sebastian Munoz, another young golfer. Sorry, Mark, you know – pe- I'm sorry to interrupt. You know the point of this is to pick the winner of the tournament, Correct. Oh, I'll get to that. He's oh, trust me, guys. Gosh, so he can get to the three most expensive guys on tour. Yeah. Not quite. I'm just busting his trust. But Sebastian Munoz, 7,900, five for five with cuts, 80 points around, or tournament rather. Just a couple of guys that are really solid and I think could really make a run at being a top 15 sort of guy this weekend. Yeah, and you do get uh, points. For position placement, so it's not just yeah, points. exactly, yeah, sure. And neither of these guys. The thing I like about these two is neither of them are super long off the tee. They're long enough, but they're not super long off the tee. And at Augusta, you don't need that. It's all about how you work the greens, your short game. And both these guys have proven that they have very good short game in their young careers. My third guy is Abraham Answer. He was ninety two hundred. Same thing. Hasn't missed a cut. Just solid looking. Shooting for a top 15 finish at Augusta this weekend. But then we get into the heavy hitters. We've got Bryson DeChambeau. Probably the favorite this weekend at Augusta. Classic. We've got Justin Thomas. Also in the conversation to be the favorite at Augusta. And we've got Xander Shoffley. Three guys that have legitimate chances to wear the green jacket on Sunday. And I know Josh has the same three based on the face he's making. (laughs) <laughs> oh, he doesn't nope. like Bryson DeChambeau, so he won't put him in his lineup. That's true. Fact. So I've got three guys that I would say are probably in the top 10 in terms of betting odds to win the Masters this weekend. And I did that because I went cheap. So fuck off, Josh. Well, that's interesting because uh, I have six guys that are top 10 in betting odds to win the Masters this weekend. Uh, this is are you where, serious? This is, of course, this is where. Mark's knowledge of golf comes into it. I don't know anything about golf. So I just went with the guys who are doing well. Mm-hmm. And we went from there. So uh, I, I was, I'll, I'll tell you the three heavy hitters first. I went with Xander Shoffley, who's arguably the hottest golfer on tour right now. I do know that. Yeah, very hot. Smoking hot. Hands on fire. 
I got Justin Thomas. He's the man. I've heard of him before. Very right. good. Cover of PGA got, Tour 2K21. Yep. And I've Very got good. men who I believe has won the Masters before. And that's Bubba Watson. Yes. Twice. Yes. Two-time Masters champion. Back to back, I believe. I went with Bubba Watson. Those are my three heavy hitters. My other three guys, you know, a little – in terms of pricing, more mid price. these guys are both in the 9,000s. I went with Louis Ushazen, big mm-hmm. South Africa guy, myself. Uh, <laughs> Huge South Africa. Zach Nunez, admitted big apartheid guy. Huge. Honestly, I'm not a fan of apartheid. <laughs> you just said Africa. huge. Uh, huge. <laughs> Somebody cut that. We got it. That. We're gonna, we're gonna this will be the first thing edited out of Hot Stove. Also, uh, mid-Masters talk, congratulations to Don Mattingly for winning Manager of the Year. He was my pick, and he won the damn award. Come on. Should've. Anyways. Louis was saying Certainly ain't big, Dave Roberts. I'm a big South Africa guy. Not a big apartheid guy. <laughs> no, you're a huge apartheid guy, according to you. Right. Not a huge. huge apartheid guy. I'm a big South African guy. <laughs> went, with, went with Louis Usazen. Then I went with the old man. I know he's only two for four on cuts so far this year. I know he's 46 points per tournament. It don't matter when you're at Augusta. I'm taking Phil Nicholson. Yeah. Can't bet against it's a hard Phil. pick. Yeah. It's a hard Can't pick. bet against I- the man. I like Phil this week, even though he finished nine over and missed the cut last week. He finished nine over because he holed out from 196 yards for Eagle on 18. Exactly. <laughs> I saw that clip and I was like, this man is back. Come on. Okay. He's got hardware and he's looking to add to it. Give me Phil Mickelson this weekend. And then my I last. Think he's got two green jackets too. My I last believe you are correct. Is uh, res- what FanDuel only refers to as, uh, I'll cover his name real quick. One respectable value, <laughs> that's all right. That. Respectable value, and that's Adam Hadwin. Yep, <gasps> I like Hadwin. No, 70, I like Hadwin. 7,800. He's four for four on cuts this tour, and mm-hmm. he is averaging 68 fantasy points per contest. Are you Adam Hadwin? Maybe. <laughs> Hadwin's, Hadwin's a solid golfer. I like him. You can't get with my picks, my picks are better than everybody else. Go golf. Go Phil Mickelson. He's winning the green jacket. Respect. Big Phil. Austin, you want to go? You want me to go? I can go. I, I can go. I can. Well, I will, I will oh, say yeah. before Austin starts, I'm not a big Phil guy. I'm a big Tiger guy. But Tiger yeah. was too highly priced for me. So I'm, I'm, big, both, I'm big on both of them. It's, I don't get why that's a problem. You got to pick. No. <laughs> Let's get my Lance Armstrong loser of the week out. Uh, everyone's got one in their lineup. Uh, I got JT Poston. Uh, Who? He, he's hit four or five cuts. Uh, he just played this past weekend, went four under. Uh, he, he's got confidence rolling into the weekend. Maybe he makes the cut. Who cares? I don't care. Nobody cares. Um, then, you know, a guy who hit the most incredible golf shot of all time uh, earlier today, uh, John Rahm. I mean, yeah, that was insane. When someone hits something like that, you just – I mean, I did not see this. God's on yeah. your side. Okay, Get, okay. Full uh, stop. I'm all right, up, film, room, gonna film, film room. Film room. Mark, stop. We're gonna do film room. Okay. Oh, I was about to look it up. No, we'll do film no, room. Film I'll see room. talking. He can't see it on his phone. No, I'll be able to see it. All right. Uh, and then uh, I went with uh, another dominant player, Justin Thomas. I mean, he's just, mm-hmm. in my opinion, the best golfer in the world. Um, I agree. So, yeah. I mean, you gotta go him if you want to. You got, you got, if you, if he wins and you don't have him, you really just feel like Jack. So, mm-hmm. um, then I went with a couple bad golfers. I really went with the idea that you can't pick guys you think are going to win because do you ever guess who wins the Masters? No. You want, so, you want the stars and scrubs approach? So I went with a bunch of garbage players. And by garbage players, I mean people you know that suck. Justin Rose, uh, one of them. Pinky uh, Poo Really Justin great Rose. golf really great golfer until it matters and it matters this weekend. So he's probably going to do terrible, but has not he won a major? Uh, I believe he won a, a British open. No, he won a U.S. open. Oh, did he? He's yeah, tied for that's... second in the masters twice, tied for third in the PGA once, won a U.S. open and tied for second in the open once. Can't get right, the job I, done. Maybe I had him backwards. Maybe, maybe he shows up in the big moments. That's what I meant. That's why I picked him. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guy. All I know is I watched him in that Tiger two to foursome thing, and he was yeah. 
he was the worst player there and it wasn't close. Mm-hmm. Tiger was better than him and everyone knows I don't like Tiger. So uh next it's also Tiger's uh, course. Splash, splash value, dominant player. He's got the heart, he's got the passion. I would Ooh. have intercourse with him. Ricky Fowler. Oh, I Ricky. Would be- He's going to show up in every color Love you've it. imagined over this course of these four days, and he's <laughs> going to dominate this tournament, come in second. to my, fi- my favorite player not named John Daly. To the guaranteed winner by 30 strokes this weekend. Yeah, okay. The one and only former best player in golf, destined to be Tiger Woods, Jordan Spieth. I take him every, <laughs> every single week he plays golf. I take him, and every week he lets me down. <laughs> He's only made 40% of his last five cuts. But you know what? When he makes the cut, he's electric. Isn't, isn't Jordan the Speed the guy that chokes at the Masters? Uh, he choked uh, once and ever yeah. since. Yeah, uh, yeah, he choked last year. Jordan Spieth hasn't had a good round of golf in three years. I thought it wasn't. It, what what course is that where Jordan Spieth choked in like 2016? That yeah. was the U.S. Open, US Open. In Oregon yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he put like um, a four stroke lead in the back nine or something like that. Something wild. Yeah, I got it. Th- I can't think of all I can tell you guys right now. Anyone listening to this show still at Oakmont? Yeah, money back guarantee. Not really. Bet your entire life. Sell your soul to the devil that Jordan Spieth not only wins this tournament, but wins it by five or more okay. strokes. Oh, okay. odds on that. I mean, uh, the odds on him winning by five or more strokes probably worse than the Jets winning the Super Bowl. I don't care. <laughs> I believe it. This, I mean, this guy's a lock to win it. I don't. If you don't take him, you just you just hate yourself. Throwing away free money. Yeah, Austin just put together a lineup a lineup of guys who are just not going to win the Masters. <laughs> I mean, he's got Rom in there. Yeah, how many there. times do you guess the winner of the Masters, Mark? Uh, I For said some. last year. I said last year the Tiger was going to win it. That doesn't count. Nice. Tiger is a cheater. He cheated that. He cheated that. Master no, Patrick time. Reed is the only cheater on the PGA Tour. Oh, here that, we go. He's the only cheater that got caught. Does Patrick? Does Patrick Reed cheat? Big There's the whole cheater. thing. He loves adjusting his wide to make it easier to hit. I don't know what that means, but okay. He, you can't like move – the ball can't move if you're, like, patting the grass underneath it or something or in a bunker if you move the sand under it. If the ball moves based on something you do to your lie, that's illegal. That, he's that, done it multiple times. That makes sense that that's illegal. Yeah. yeah. He and does. he's been caught – he's been caught doing Everyone it does it. No, Every, they don't. Yes, they do. <laughs> that's you not true. Yeah, people are moving their law all the time. All right, here it is. Let's get into it. Uh, first off, an honorable mention to my new book that I'm reading, Tiger Woods, New York Times bestseller. Can't put it just in came out, didn't it? Uh, last year, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, it was 2019, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, re- uh, good so far. Point here is too expensive for my taste. Tiger has no chance to do anything well this week. Yeah, if he makes like, the cut, I'll be happy. Um, he's like 11,000, isn't he? Uh, yeah, 11-1. Which yeah, is absurd. It's ridiculous. I mean, I know he's the ma- he's the reigning champ, but that's still absolutely absurd. I'd suck Tiger any day of the week, and I still wouldn't give him eleven thousand in a fan. I'd, I'd take Tiger at seventy five hundred. <laughs> I'd take Ti- honestly. I'd take him at like ninety five. I'd still I'd buy. Him, I'd, I'd take him at Phil price. Like if he was the same price, yeah. I'd still take yeah. Tiger instead of Phil. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, here let's. I'll go with Mark's same approach because I kind of got three Dookie cheeks and three stars. Uh, it'll just be fun when we get to the stars. So, starting with my cheapest person, I went with Kevin Na. Kevin Na, uh, heard of that electric guy. out there on the course. Just, just one of those names that keeps up with you. I don't think he's played in a month. His most recent FanDuel update is the Memorial Tournament, which was no. He he played after the Memorial. He played two weeks okay. ago. Oh, okay. So he's still playing. He's still playing. He's yeah. fine. Averaging 70, it's fine. Uh, next up in my really just loser stinking up place, uh, Billy Horschel. I could care less about Billy Horschel. You want to oh, talk about a loser like Billy. Austin? One? Who cares? Guys made three or three cuts. That's all that matters. And uh, someone who was in it last year who had an epic meltdown of epic meltdowns, the Italian. Francisco oh, Fran- Molinari at 8,400. Uh, hopefully he doesn't find the water, but God was I rooting for it last year. It was fantastic to see the downfall of this. Yeah, we were. 
Yeah, Josh, I remember time. Josh and I went out to Wade's that morning. We, we both did. wore red. It was we great. Did. We were prepped. Yeah. We were prepped and ready to go. It was a fantastic day. And then Tiger uh, went out. It was one of the best days of my life. It was. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, it was a, a great fantastic day. day of football that and uh yeah fantastic football was not on i'm retarded sorry i uh i'm talking about uh i was playing nba and football when playing that okay mm. uh and then my top three completely different from mark's top three uh his top three superstars he went with what thomas bryson and shoffley yeah yeah so i went with austin uh john rom just hit the shot of the century and so still waiting to see this yeah <laughs> john rom shot of the century definitely Definitely going to compete this week. We will, I will show you the shot once we are done with the lineups. All right. Cool. Um, in what might just be one of the most consistent golfers of this last season with Rom, Dustin Johnson is electric, due to do great things, or at least he always is in the Wait, majors. He hasn't really I, been around. Can I guess your last one? Yeah. Is it Rory? No. Oh. No. Probably the only other guy in the 1100, or 1100s that we haven't talked about. It's major time, baby. He's back, and I'm not talking about the injury. He's back. Brooks Kepka had a great week last week. At the, at the he was he was in the top five there at, at the last tournament that just held, I think, at the Zozo, I believe. And he, he's ready. I think so. He, or at least he shot a pretty well tournament, if I remember correctly. If, if he also he just went well. up forty-two to seven. I need one more score. Oh yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, tied for fifth at the uh, at Brooks at uh, at Brooks um, at Zozo Houston. Houston. Okay. Sorry. My bad. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm excited for major Brooks. Maybe he's back. I hope so. I like X Brooks is as much as I hated it at first after playing the game of golf more, I kind of appreciate the fact that it does all blend together at some points, especially mm-hmm. when you do it at that level for so good. You're probably like, yeah, I don't know. I hit a great shot. Like, what do you want? From, like 12, mm-hmm. who cares? Who cares? Like you just, you remember the good and you remember the bet. You remember front and begin, for, uh, beginning and end. It's like any book, any movie, whatever. You, those are the parts you memorize the best. And so I, I get it. I no longer give him crap for that. He's my guy, rocking it. Zero salary remaining. That's my master's lineup. Cool. I want to say that uh, what I want to see the most is Bryson pull out the, the 48-inch driver. He said, <laughs> He's going he said, to. He said he wasn't, and then today he came out and said, or yesterday he came out and said, I swung with it, and it's it's been perfect. It's been amazing. I think I might actually pull it out. That would be nuts. I mean, the advantage you get from driving out, driving people by 40 yards is, is insanity. It's insanity. If he gets it, he has a huge advantage going into the tournament. But yeah, my, my housemate was telling me, cause my, one of my housemates is a huge golf guy. And he was telling me about how like um, Bryson being like an engineer basically. And like, mm-hmm. yeah. like, crafting this club and he said basically like the only reason that it won't come out in the masters if it's as if it's like not ready yet like, yeah insane and yeah, that's what he said he was practicing with it and it felt great so that's big brained right there going out and making your own club i don't get why more guys don't use 48 inch drivers it's just like, accuracy they'd rather yeah. get it 300 straight than 340 and chance of fairway miss but if you can practice with it, I mean, wa- yeah. that's what long drive drivers do is they I, use 48 inch drivers. Think the problem is like, is that you just don't, there's no longevity in it. Like, I don't know how long a golfer lasts swinging that way with that big of a club. Yeah, that's true. You don't I have mean, to swing as hard as Bryson though. You're yeah, with a 48 inch driver, you're you going know, to get more distance I, anyway. I do wonder, I also wonder why there's a limit on how long the driver can be. It's just – that's just the way the USGA is. They, the head can only be as, up to a certain size. Long drivers use 52-inch clubs. Drivers. Some of them use 52. Ball ball. I, I've seen guys that use 58 – or 48, too. Yeah. All right. Uh, a couple things before we get out of here. Josh, Miami of Ohio just kicked a field goal. <laughs> yeah. so the over has hit. Uh, damn it. Um, bum, 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 money. Before we skedaddle out of here, we're going to do one more session of Hot Stove Film Room. So yeah, I got to see this. But Mark can see the shot um, of the century. No cap, probably the best thing we've ever seen. Hit today. This is what he wanted to do. I mean, obviously not maybe the end, but yeah. this is the is play. two golf balls there? No. It Hit just looks weird. With the... By John Rom. Watch this.
Oh, he had a skip shot? Uh, not only, Mark. It's going to go in. Yeah, we wouldn't be showing it to you if it yeah. wasn't going to go in, but. That's pretty sick. I'll, I'll give him that. That's a, re- that's a really awesome flip. shot. I didn't see the trajectory of this ball. God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he, he like stopped looking. Like you can kind of see when it pans back. He's like, what? Did it? Oh, <laughs> he's, he's like, that's, no way. Look that's pretty face. great. It's all having fun. That's one of the best golf shots I've ever seen in my life. You should pull oh. that out this weekend. <laughs> the old skip shot, you know? That'd be insane. Just a, something if people are, you know, super hyped about the Masters this weekend. Wednesday, tomorrow, is one of the best parts of the festivities at Augusta. I it's thought they the, canceled it. Did they cancel the par three? Yes. They I did. thought, I thought for actually. sure they canceled it. Oh, no. Never, damn it. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry to ruin it for I, you. But, yeah. They I didn't know that. I, but I love the Augusta that. par three tournament. When you get the guys like Jack Nicholas and Gary Player and all these yeah, legendary to, golfers. When we get to shovel off Jack Nicholas's corpse just to come out here and <laughs> mooch a drive made a hole 25 yards. Two years ago. Yeah, he sucks. Well, I will get say, I will say, I mean, we kind of expect that considering they they like I said before, they're not allowing like previous champ- yeah. like retired champions to come for the champions dinner or anything like that. I mean, they're still letting him play though. Guys like Nicholas can't afford the cocoa. Retired champions, they're letting – I mean, they'd let them play, but they're retired, so. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, they are playing in the Masters. It, like, Yeah, no, I'm saying it's they don't want all the old people there, like the really old people there. Yeah, who are going to die? You want, you want to risk Jack Nicklaus <laughs> getting COVID? Yeah, but there are guys in their 60s playing there. They're not in their 70s like Jack is, but there, there are guys in their 60s. I know uh, Freddie Couples is like – 63, I, I think, and what, Bernard dude. Longer's up there. And... You look at Jack, uh, you don't know if you uh-huh. want that guy walking, let alone getting <laughs> He looks disgustingly old now. <laughs> oh, I mean, he looks very bad. I'm not I'm not saying he doesn't, but... Maybe he just stays home. Anywho, that has been it for this episode of the Hot Stove Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe on the video. Da, 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 da. I don't know what that was. As well as leave a <laughs> comment if you're feeling frisky. Hit the bell as well. What the hell was that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, Count Dracula signing us off. Blah, Making like Dracula. The blood. Yeah, blah. <laughs> um, also make sure to follow us on Twitter at Hot WMYO. We will be back at it this weekend. For the next episode of Hot Stove After Dark, we'll be talking about our top 10 sports movies of all time. So make sure to check that out when it comes out. In the meantime, stay frosty, stay positive. Rest in peace, Alex Trebek. Oh, Oh, and rest in peace, uh, Tommy Heinsohn. Yes, rest in peace, Tommy Heinsohn. Somebody Uh, else died. Somebody else died. Sean Connery? Yeah, that's the one. Also, rest in peace, Sean Connery. Yeah. Um. No, good riddance. All right. See you guys. See see you guys next time. (laughs) Peace.